So, I'm going to count down from five down to one. When I reach one, I will point at you. You will clap. Hey, a lot. Hey, there's Steve. Hey, Steve. Hey. <laughs> and then the show will begin. Five, four, three, two, one. The best time to write is now. The best place to write is here. The best person to write is you. Thank you very much. I am Azrael Johnson, founder and director of Writing Nights. How are you doing out there? We have a great show tonight. We have a sword fight brewing between Daria Quinn and Finn Thrace. Woo! Claps. I want to remind everyone about the open mic list. We have two lists, one recorded, one not recorded. Um, we also have books for the grand showcase. Uh, those are $15. We also have banners that if you were like, hey, I want to be part of the grand showcase magic, you can have a banner because I don't want to have them anymore because I'm not going to use them for anything because they take 2018 on them. <laughs> and we're not going to have another one grand showcase this year. Maybe next year. Alright. Is anyone out there? I can't hear anyone. Woo! Excited! Come on! Woo! A great night today. And to kick off the great night. So we usually wait until the, sh the uh, show has already started to do our open call, but I feel like changing up a little bit. So is anyone interested in, you know, laying out a challenge for someone else in the sword fight? Wait, what what what? 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 I love that. I put a challenge out and didn't nobody respond, so I thought you were ready to be the feature. All right, well, does anyone want to hear from Renee Sanders? Come on up. Yeah! I told y'all I'm the best. <laughs> Please. So how y'all doing? I am good. good. Well, you know, I put that challenge out there and didn't nobody respond to it, so I figured, well, they know 
the best when they see it, so they didn't, didn't bother to challenge. So we'll just go with that. Actually, Renee, uh -oh. I don't guess. Yes. Oh. The idea of you being the best, I just have one thing to say. What's that? Bless your heart. Oh. Oh, baby. Oh, <laughs> Well, I'm the best either way, so all right, if that's how you want to play it, I'll play it like that, so, darling. There's only one way to find out for sure, isn't there? Uh -huh. So who wants to see Renee Sanders against Skylar Bruce? Woo. All right, all right. No one? I don't hear anyone clapping. This might be uh -huh. uh -huh. She shares an accent with the most respected newscasters in the U.S. Please welcome the Northeast Ohio poet, Skylar Bruce. <laughs> and in this corner, the bell of the South will dispel northern myths about South white sharing her wit. <laughs> Edit that out, future ass. In this corner, the bell of the South will dispel northern myths about the South while sharing her wit, wisdom, and worldview, Renee Sanders. Does anyone have a coin? I need to borrow a coin. I do. I do need to have coins. Pat's got a coin. Patrick. Sorry. Pretty Pat. Yes, it's the day. So we begin every sword fight with the coin flip, and since Renee did indeed lay the challenge out first, I'm going to let her call. Heads or tails, Renee? Heads. Heads. It's heads. Renee, you can go first. <laughs> All right, I'm going to count down from five to one. When I hit one, I'll point at you and say go. You have two minutes. This is the two-minute round. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi, y'all again. All right, so the first thing I'm going to tell you about is how the view of women is changing in the South. And I know our theme is hot August nights. This was actually a hot spring night in New Orleans. And it is called Easter Shoes. On Palm Sunday Eve, she was breaking in her Easter shoes. Muted, pink, creamy pumps. She wore them on stage with her jeans, t-shirt, and plaid over blouse. She tapped her patent pumps in time to the music she made. Blowing her sacks for the crooked vines. Just like the boys in the band, she was there to back up the girl singer, who was a little too cute to flaunt sexy, but she got pretty damn close. Tall boots, six inch spikes, little black dress, hot damn. Shaking those long extended Shirley Temple curls as she sang, up town, funky up. Uptown funky up, sax comes front and center. Uptown funk you up, don't believe me, just watch. Palm Sunday Eve, sisterhood strut, one in spiked heels, the other in her Easter shoes. Girls hit you, hallelujah.
Yep. I'll pull into the blood on my hands. I've been told that murdering the English language is a crime against humanity. It might be more accurate to note the ways that enforcement of standardized English is itself a crime against the people. We judge the y'alls and libraries don't even ask about ain't. We celebrate the liberated poets who cuss just the right amount, but scoff at the performer who done wrote this shit. Education is a basic human right, we say, but fail to fund it equally in the zip code. We dismiss the dialects of subcultures as ignorant or unprofessional while claiming to be colorblind. We say everyone can speak properly, punishing those who can't or don't fucking want our rules. The blood on my hands is from the social media spelling and punctuation corrections. The blood on my hands shouts at me from years as a college writing center tutor when I focused on how someone constructed sentences instead of helping them hone, them hone their voice. No surprise that now, some of them choose silence. The blood on my hands is for each side eye, rigid stare, or eye roll at people who dared speak their own dialect in my presence. For each time I chose patronizing platitudes to English language learners instead of listening to their words. The blood on my hands might not have, have dripped from my knife but it may have come from the suicide blade of someone I made feel small, whose lives are less important to us than perfect execution of English. Thank you.
but the only ones who have been restored so far are oil companies. Hey Pittsburgh, it's Cleveland. I see your three rivers and I raise you a burning one.
defined by the weatherman as three days in a row over 90 degrees. A heat advisory may have been warned against the sun. Remain indoors where you can breathe air that has been conditioned. They're afraid of the heat. Bless their icy cold hearts. My confused are too cool. Yankee Blue friends, the weather report does not define hot. Hot is Maggie the cat on the tin roof. I know this hot from spending steamy August days in the state of Williamson's, Tennessee, back when there was no cool air to be pumped, when ladies kept their fans close at hand to flip the stifling of pumps to air across their dampened appearance. You don't know how my doodle dandy, but perhaps you are getting a glimmer of the why for that which you made fun of for oh so long, the southerner and his slow moving ways and draws. He was hot. A long, tall glass, a sweet iced tea out on the veranda, that is the refuge to be had. A languid mood, glass to lips, a cold sip glide, bathe in the throat and beyond. The buzz of the big old porch ceiling fan overhead, the cadence of the cicadas riding on what you wish was a breeze. Now that is hot. Now the glass of tea is touched to the cheek, the forehead, before taking another long, cool swallow. And when the sweat begins to beat up between her breasts, well, she'll open one, well, maybe two, buttons of her blouse so that the precipitated drop from her glass can trickle its own cool stream down and in between. She waves her waves and dabs her rose water lace hanging across her glistening cleavage before lifting her hair from the back of her neck in a vain hope that a breeze she might encounter. That poor southern gentleman takes a bowl of that fine hot air. He does his best to cool it before blowing it across her bare neck. Now that, my darling, is hot. And so, Ohio, in other parts north, when you find yourself sweltering, you better learn the ways of summer sultry days. Otherwise, that heat may bring you to your knees. Not so funny now, is it? The South may have the last laugh after all. We told y'all we'd rise again, and so we have with the sun. <laughs> Miss Elena told me about the Mexican Pooh Fairy 
mouse. Err, err, roncito perez. Does Esme know about the other tooth fairy? Si, mija, but her smile is biggest for perez. I want the mouse to get my tooth this time. I'm too excited to sleep tonight because I want to see err, err, ratoncito perez. In the morning, our whole family went to see grandmother. Our whole family, except Miss Elena. Mama wanted the windows washed. I heard Daddy say it wasn't safe, but Mama doesn't believe rumors. I like listening to adults talk. <laughs> What's a lynch mob? Why would someone be a dirty stick if they have water on their back? Is my back wet? The road home from grandmother's is dark. We're close now. My tree house has lights. The fairies have come. The whole tree is shiny and bright. Light bursts jump high, fall down, and jump up again. The fairies are dancing in the air, and Miss Elena is dancing up high with them. But Miss Elena, why do you dance so slow? Miss Elena, open your eyes, and we'll dance together. It's so hot near the tree. Fairy lights shouldn't burn my hand. Daddy shouted fire, brought buckets of water. His knife cut rope, and Miss Elena stopped dancing as the fairies went away. Miss Elena is on the ground now, and she doesn't look like herself. The fairies didn't stop the monsters with lots of feet. The red footprints go everywhere, even up Elena's torn dress and onto her face. Wake up, Miss Elena. I made my fairy house real strong, so you can climb up with me. Miss Elena, it's been a long time since that night. I think I see you in lots of places. I hug myself now real tight like you did, but it isn't you. I met Esme. She was quiet and sad. I showed her my new loose tooth, but even Ratoncito Perez doesn't make her smile. Esme lives with her cousins now because the monsters left red footprints on her daddy, too. My daddy says it's not safe for me to see Esme again. I stay awake in case the monsters come back. Nobody really sleeps now. I was just the last one to wake. Thank you. 